Credit unions. Big enough to cope, small enough to care. Becky is worried. School starts in three weeks and she hasn't got money for Jason's uniform. And it's his birthday next week. Her friend Carly tells her about her local credit union, which she joined a couple of years ago. She pays in her child benefit each month and saves a small amount. She's even had a couple of loans and they don't charge the earth in interest. Credit unions are community banks. Members save with them and the money is borrowed by other members. It's all regulated, so your money is fully protected, just as it would be in a high street bank. The staff are friendly and helpful. And they're all members too. This could be just what Becky needs. And joining is easier than you think. All you need is proof of your ID, like your passport or a letter from the DWP. Plus a utility or council tax bill that's less than three months old. If your local credit union is just what you need, get in touch online. And remember, your money will be protected by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. Credit unions. Big enough to cope, small enough to care. Thanks to their local credit union, Joan and Fred have spent the last five years seeing the world. Once upon a time, they didn't have savings and struggled to cope with unexpected bills. After years of relying on payday lenders, they finally discovered the credit union. Once they put enough by to cover minor emergencies, they took out a small loan for their first mini-break abroad. They've also opened a junior savings account for their eldest grandchild, Mia. Like them, she saves a bit of her pocket money each week and puts it into her account. Great habits learnt young. Joan and Fred are happy, knowing they're looking after their family's future. If your local credit union is just what you need, get in touch online and remember, your money will be protected by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. Credit unions. Big enough to cope, small enough to care. Megan and Kyle just got the keys to their first home. Joining their local credit union was Meg's idea. They've been paying in whatever they could and now have saved enough to borrow money for a TV. They first saw the one they wanted in a pay weekly store. But when Kyle did the maths, they realised how much it would cost them in the long run. Enter the credit union with a great value loan that nearly halves the amount they pay. It's a no-brainer. If your local credit union is just what you need, Get in touch online and remember, your money will be protected by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. Credit unions. Big enough to cope, small enough to care. Tom joined the credit union after getting into trouble with the loan shark. He'd needed to borrow 500 pounds fast, and a fella down the pub said he could help. When Tom's work hours got cut and he couldn't meet repayments, that fella sent the heavies round. They followed him everywhere, and even threatened to kill his dog. Tom contacted the illegal money lending team, who explained that because the debt was illegal, he didn't owe any money. They prosecuted the loan shark and Tom's debt was wiped. They also told him about the local credit union, which offers a safe way to save and borrow. Now things are looking up for Tom and his family. If your local credit union is just what you need, get in touch online and remember, your money will be protected by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. If you or someone you know is involved with the loan shark, do what Tom did and call the Stop Loan Sharks 24-hour confidential hotline. They're waiting to help, and you don't have to leave your details if you don't want to. Tom would like to thank his local credit union 
and the England illegal money lending team. The team prosecutes loan sharks and puts them in jail. They also confiscate their ill-gotten gains and use them to pay for things like this video. Rotan, <laughs> Quand Pierre se relève donc pour recommencer à marcher à nouveau, je vois comment le genou est tordu. En ce moment-là, je n'étais pas à l'aise. Je me disais que mon enfant est déjà handicapé. J'ai entendu parler de mes chez par ma soeur. Je me dis donc, je vais te voir ici avec l'enfant. Prends Pierre, 
et par le chemin, tu arrives ici. Ça me faisait mal. Parce que je me suis dit qu'on ne va pas opérer mon enfant. Pour cela que je ne fais que plus. Je ne faisais que plaire, mais j'aime pas voir quand mon enfant souffre. J'aime souffrir à la place de mes enfants. When we're able to provide them with the, the surgery able to straighten their legs, we start to see a transformation that takes place and we start to see a little twinkle come back in their eye. Depuis qu'on a fait l'opération à mon fils, je suis à l'aise. Même si j'ai quel genre de problème, je digère quand je vois ça, quand je vois mon enfant marcher.
Father God, you are awesome in power. Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for every single person in this place. Lord God, every gift, um, every talent. We thank you, Jesus, for um, every single one here and at home, those that we see and those that we don't. God, I pray for those who are poorly. Lord, I pray for those struggling. Each and every one of us have our own struggles. And Jesus, thank you that we can give each and every single one of those struggles to you. Father God, I pray for each person suffering with a bit of depression right now. Father, loneliness, anxiety, Jesus, I pray that you um, equip us to help those around us who are feeling those things. And Jesus, I pray for your unbelievable peace that passes all understanding may come upon those who are struggling right now. Jesus, we thank you that we can come to you every day and you wash us clean every day, new every morning. Father, I pray that when we make mistakes or we've made mistakes, even today, Jesus, we leave it at the cross. And we say sorry and we thank you for your forgiveness and your grace. God, I pray wherever we go today, whatever we do, Jesus, and what we hear today, Lord, that it will just be saturated inside us, that we just absorb all of you, all of what your word has to say. And God, let's pray right now. It's a huge blessing on each of these wonderful people in our church in which we love and we serve. God, thank you. Thank you for who you are.
quite beautiful wasn't it do apologize for those of you watching at home I understand we had a few gremlins in the system hope they're ironed out now we're going to pray for our children and young people as they go out to their group so Lord we thank you uh, for the young people that we have here for those associated with the church for all those we pray your richest blessing on them and especially young people everywhere as they struggle to come to terms with all the the restrictions that they've had to go through. Lord, we just pray your blessing on them and we pray this morning that the young people here might go out and hear something more of you and be inspired to follow you day by day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You can disappear if you want to and do something exciting outside. <coughs> <laughs> I think he wanted to come up here actually I don't think that's what he wanted Isaiah says do you not know, have you not heard that the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He won't grow tired or weary and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary. He increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I'd like to be like that this morning. Um, I was in Scotland last year and we went over to the island of Mull. And for the first time, I saw an eagle soaring. Now, you might think you sometimes see eagles, but mostly they're some kind of um, hawks or something else. But when you see an eagle, you know it. It's like a barn door in the sky. And it just, it's just there. It doesn't flap. It's just like this. And it just soars absolutely effortlessly. Wow. To do that in life. What a wonderful thought. We're going to come before God now with our prayers. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you for your hand that's guided us over many years, over certainly the time that we've been locked down in this crisis. And we have put our hope in you. We need our strength renewed. We long to soar on wings like eagles. You are our everlasting God creator of everything there before time began there when this present age comes to an end 
our minds can't fathom your power and your majesty. Yet by faith we come before you to acknowledge you as our God, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ and the giver of your precious Holy Spirit. Father, you are holy mystery to us. Yet everything in this world screams about your amazing creative power. That you are a wonderful, loving God. In you we find real beauty. As we gaze on a glorious sunset or watch a flower bloom, it reminds us of your majesty. You are so, so good to us. You provide our daily needs, needs in such a faithful way. Your wisdom is unsearchable. Your love causes us to reach out, to steward your creation, to give to those who are in need. Father, we thank you for your salvation plan because at the right time you sent your son Jesus Christ into the world to show us the full extent of your love for us. Jesus became your sacrificial lamb, dying to gain victory over sin, over death and over hell forever. Yet he rose again to offer us new life and new hope. And even when he'd completed this work, you sent your spirit to be our helper and guide. Father, you give us everything we need and we come before you this morning to praise you and thank you. We worship your glorious name, the great I Am. The God who never lets us down. The God who never forsakes us. The God who is closer to us than even a prayer. Blessed be your name. Amen. The lovely thing about being part of a church is that you discover people with wonderful gifts and talents. And we are very blessed in this church to have a number of people who are serving the Lord in different ways in our midst. And today, I want to welcome Giles to come up and bring us the word this morning. We are really excited that you're speaking to us. I have to say, I said to him this morning, I, I, some reason, I got a copy of his sermon, so I read it the other day, and I was just so excited about it. I got a preview, um, so I know it's going to be good. So, Giles, come, come forward, and let's, let's just pray for you as you bring God's word. Father, we thank you that Giles has given his time, his energy, and his effort to you to bring us this word this morning. We pray that you would speak to him and speak through him that he might be a source of blessing and challenge and encouragement to us all. Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Father God, I pray that you will be able to speak truth through my words this morning. And I pray that my words won't get in the way of anything that you want to say to me now. Amen. You've got no common sense. That's something I used to hear a lot when I was little. You've got no common sense. If I piled things up in the way of a door, 
or put a boot down somewhere I was definitely going to knock it over in like 10 seconds time or that time I was throwing a golf ball around in the house and somehow a window got broken <laughs> no common sense when I was small I thought common sense was a way of understanding the world that everybody else could do because it was common but somehow I was lacking as time went on I came to realize what common sense really was. A way of understanding the results that your actions might have, but before you actually did that action and found out the hard way. Find a big muddy hole in the ground out in the woods. Common sense is what would have told me that it would be impossible to get out of before I jumped down and found out the hard way that I was stuck. As I grew up, I discovered that there's something else you can use if, like me, you've got no common sense. And that alternative is something we call wisdom. Wisdom is a bit like science, because it uses experience and results to predict how the world is going to respond to what we do. Drop a glass of water on the tiles, yeah, that's going to break. And if you don't have the common sense to realize it's going to break, you can find out by experiment. And that's wisdom. And the great thing about wisdom is that you can use other people's too. You can learn from your own mistakes, but you can also learn from the mistakes that other people have made. And eventually you can learn so much that you can avoid making poor choices or behaving wrongly because you've already learned how things are going to turn out. Excellent. That's wisdom sorted then. Except there's a problem with that. It might show us what to expect from the world around us. It might show us what we can expect from each other. But it doesn't show us what we might expect from our Heavenly Father. And most importantly, it doesn't show us what our Heavenly Father expects from us. Fortunately, we have two ways to find out. The Lord has left us the scriptures, the Bible, full of teaching and examples of what true wisdom, spiritual wisdom, really means. During the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus teaches a story about wisdom, about the wise and foolish builders. Um, I've got it here in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 29. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught as one who had authority, and not as their teachers of the law. We know that story, don't we? The wise man builds his house on solid foundation. The fool's house is washed away. That's the sort of wisdom we might think we'd learn from our experience of the world. And that, of course, is why Jesus uses it in his parable. True wisdom is to hear Jesus' words as the truth, to hear his words and to put them into practice, to act on them, to have Jesus' words form the foundation, the rock, of our lives. We have his words in the Bible to read, to study, to understand, to build on. But there's a bit of a problem with that too. And the problem is still us, I'm afraid. The problem is we can misunderstand. We can misinterpret. We can think we already know how to behave because of earthly wisdom 
or perhaps if you were blessed with common sense. Like the disciples so often did, we can miss the real truth in Jesus' words, even when we think we've understood. A long time ago, at my last church, I used to help out with some of the youth work, and sometimes I would lead a junior church for the teenagers on a Sunday morning. One week I asked them a question. What do you think is the worst sin? Of course, because teenagers have all the answers, they had plenty of things to say. Murder, war, rape, torture, terrorism, a huge long list of awful, awful, terrible sins and of earthly crimes. But I said that perhaps I had a way I could show them the truth. I had a way to show them what might be the worst sin. So I produced a little handful of tablets to show them. Now, I mean, you can tell this was a long time ago because already this sounds dead sinister. Um, but <laughs> they knew me. I'd worked with them for a long time. They trusted me. Um, and so some of the braver ones tried a tablet and took one to chew on. Now, what they didn't know was that these tablets were disclosing tablets that I bought from a chemist. Now, I don't know if you remember them. Uh, disclosing tablets turn red any plaque that's left on your teeth so children can see where they've missed when they've been brushing their teeth and where they haven't cleaned them properly. And sure enough, the brave teenagers who'd tried a tablet from me ended up with bright red teeth. It was like a horror film. The tablets had done their job. And even though the kids thought they'd dutifully brushed their teeth that morning, the tablets showed where they hadn't cleaned them properly. So maybe, I said to them, the worst sin is the sin you don't know is still there. Maybe it's the sin you thought was gone, the one you thought you'd dealt with, the one you thought you'd cleaned up. Because if you don't know that sin is still there, then you might just keep doing it. You might never stop. You won't ask the Lord to forgive you for something that you don't know you're doing. And that brings us to the second part of how I think we can find true wisdom. James tells us, in fact, very simply in the Bible, we ask the Lord. In James chapter 1, verses 5 to 7 say, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. So we must constantly be asking. When we pray, praying not just for the needs of others, or for our own needs, but for what our Father needs from us. We need wisdom to discern what he wants for us. We need to discern where we haven't cleaned our spiritual teeth properly, where we might be unwittingly leave, leaving a sin unaddressed in our lives just because we're oblivious. Maybe over time something can grow in, in your heart that can cause a problem. Maybe we're following too closely along with something that this world condones as being harmless. But we don't see how contrary it is to the path the Father wants us to follow. We need to be on our toes. We need to be prepared to have things highlighted in our lives that we might not like highlighted. And that might be hard. I've recently been asking God to show me where I'm still going wrong. And he has dropped a great big disclosing tablet on my life. He's turned a lot of things red. 
that I wasn't expecting to still be read. It's hard, and I'm not enjoying it, but I'm glad. I'm glad because when you know where the sin is, you can make it right with Jesus. And we can deal with it, whatever it is, through our relationship with Jesus. Paul writes to the Colossians, they may be encouraged in heart and united in love, so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding, in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Jesus is the key. Jesus is the red tablet, but Jesus is also the best toothbrush. The only true wisdom comes to us when we have the courage to ask him for it, when we have the honest relationship with him to accept it, and we have the strength and faith to apply it in our lives. Lord, I pray that we will be brave, we will have the courage to ask. I thank you that we know you will always freely give all the wisdom that we need to right ourselves. And I pray that we will have a relationship with you through Jesus that is so close that we will gladly accept everything you tell us and use it as the rock where we can build our foundation. Amen. Thank you, Giles. It's a very challenging talk this morning. Um, because I guess it's so easy to fall into spiritual pride, to think that we've got something sorted. And sometimes we haven't. Sometimes we need it pointed out. And we need to go back to God. And we need to come before him humbly. Let's just reflect on that for a moment as I pray. Father, by your Spirit, we pray that you would speak into our lives. That we might gain your wisdom as we ask for it. And that you would clean us afresh. We thank you that Jesus Christ died for our sins. We don't need to carry them. Father, give us grace and humility that we can encourage one another, that we can be there for one another at times of trial, and at crisis. That we won't be there proudly telling other people what to do, but we might walk with them and together discover your will for our lives. Lord, we open our lives before you. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Amen. I was on a, um, a Zoom call, um, a pastoral Zoom call that I have every Monday morning with Ruth, and we talk about all the people um, that are struggling at the moment in the church, people that are, um, you know, need our prayers, and there are a huge number of people within our fellowship who are either going to hospital, having tests, or had an operation and are recovering, and this morning, I thought as we celebrate the 73rd anniversary of the NHS, um, we should remember them in our prayers. Most of us are so thrilled that we have an NHS that's there. And we, we, we're just pleased to have it. And we want to pray God's richest blessing on all those who work within it. Let's pray. Father, we come before you, and it is yet at a good time. We expect that in a few weeks' time, the, the lockdown rules will be relaxed, and we can begin to live life more normally once again. And we owe such a debt of gratitude to those who are working in our wonderful NHS, treating everybody who is sick, regardless of their status or income. Father, it stands as a beacon of love, fairness and justice in our community, reflecting your compassion for all humanity. Doctors, nurses and various ancillary staff and carers have been working around the clock to save lives afflicted by a terrible virus, trying to protect the vulnerable and treat the sick. We thank you for each one who has shown such sacrificial love, such compassion and care. We pray your richest blessing as they now come to struggle with weariness and emotional turmoil as they rebuild their own family lives. We ask especially for wisdom for hospital managers and consultants as they seek to pick up routine operations that have been postponed. We pray for wisdom for junior doctors as they diagnose people's illnesses and work out courses of treatment. We pray for a steady hand for surgeons as they operate on those who need invasive treatment. We especially pray for those wonderful nurses in the compassionate work they undertake. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for ambulance staff and paramedics in their vital work, for hospital porters and cleaners, for GPs, their teams, who are our point of entry into the NHS. Lord, grant them wisdom, strength and patience. Give them grace as they deal with frantic and often angry people. Protect them, we pray, and bless them in everything that they do. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for mental health staff. So many, especially the young, have fallen into depression and fear over the last year. Lord, bless them. Bless our mental health workers, so often feeling undervalued and ignored. 
we also pray your blessing on all social workers, dentists and others who play such a vital role in our care system. All of them giving their best for the sake of others. Thank you for them. Bless them. And in your mercy hear our prayer. Father, we thank and praise you that you have raised up gracious and humble people with huge hearts to care for us. We give you thanks and then pray that in the, even in the midst of this current turmoil, you would grant wisdom to our government, that the NHS might be fully valued and supported. May it never become a political football, but always be celebrated as part of the wonderful fabric of our free and fair Christian society, reflecting your love, mercy and compassion, and that of our gracious God. We particularly remember those of our fellowship, those who we know, who are waiting operations, who are having tests, who have had operations. In this moment of silence, Lord, we lift these people to you, remembering them in our hearts. And finally, as we pray for wisdom and strength for our NHS, we also pray it for each one of us personally, for our families, for our friends. The wisdom to put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour. To put him first in our lives. And so discover real meaning and purpose. We finish by saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain on each one of us now and forevermore. Amen.